Yo, yo, yo. I'm in the game, but I'm going to teach you something. Today is an amazing day. Today is the day where we learn about making heavy brass or heavy horns in your drop and in your intro, like the pros, like Jekyll and Hyde. I hear it all the time. Barely even realize there's all this brass and trombones, but we're going to get down. I'm going to show you how we can make something loud, heavy, and thick. Because this is going to be background or even a motif or like a call. I recreated the Space Cathedral remix by Jekyll and Hyde. And he uses some brass like this. And then there's also some sustained brasses like this. So that's coming in about negative five. So basically during the drop, it goes like. We have extra brasses here. This is going to show you how I made this. First thing we have to know is the scale, right? Because the whole technique that makes this brass sound good is us walking down the scale. We're in C sharp minor. The home note is C sharp, which is this note here. And if you see, we're not playing the note because the note gets played after the loop ends. Basically here. So we walk down the scale. Right down. All these highlighted notes are in the scale and we just walk all the way down so it ends perfectly on the C sharp. When you hear this brass, that's a C sharp after we played this. So for the first two bars, we're like, dun, 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 walking down, and then boom, end it there. We have to make sure it's loud, it's EQ'd well, and we have the correct layers so that the frequency spectrum is filled. We're going to go over those things. Now, there are multiple groups here. There's two groups within a group. The main brass group has effects to make it loud, like this multiband dynamics, which is some clean gain at 61%. It's Camel Crushers on British Clean. Well, uh, listen to the difference with this Camel Crusher. So that's making it louder. EQ8, taking out the lows. And then these two are actually only turning on during the drop. Because during the drop, we want it to be a little bit louder. We also want it to have more reverb to create an extra sense of space. So when you hear these brass hits, they're going to be the ones that are actually affected. These have more reverb, if you can tell. Otherwise, they're going to be turned off during the intro. Then as soon as we hit the drop, they go And if you notice, when we get here, we start to get like darker, deeper. There are a couple different layers as well that we use with contact to create these actual live instruments like the tuba, the French horn, the trombone. We need these. The first group is the scale, the brass scale. So when we're walking down the scale, I have a group here, a saturator, multiband dynamics. This is also only turning on during the drop. And a pro L that's making it a little bit louder at three decibels of gain. So this, these are just making it louder, right? On the group or the scale notes. Then we have another group for the drop brass which includes those brass hits. This has some nice mid-side EQ. So you see the sides are boosted here at 230. The mids are cut pretty nice here at 150. We're dropping it low at 880, low shelf. And we're taking a little mid dip at 267 as well. 
is cleaning up some frequencies. And then of course these drop brasses need to be loud. So the G clip is really doing a lot of heavy work here. Nine decibels, 9.6 decibels of gain on the G clip. Let's listen before and after. <laughs> And on this. So that adds really nice volume, nice gain, distortion a little bit, so that's good. You can see here the drop brass. If we solo it, we're at about negative six luffs. If you look at how wide it is, we have the whole signal full. One thing here that we're going to be doing is layering mono and stereo a lot. So the first thing we need to do is lay out our instrument. So I started here with a tuba. And we're starting on the root note, walking down. Are these sustained? No French horn. Now in contact, it makes it easy. They have the brass section. You can just pick a tuba. We're basically using all the brass, right? Brass section. Nice French horn. It's a French horn ensemble. And it's in the sustain articulation right here. This trombone. See, this trombone is very important, but the actual instrument doesn't go very low in pitch. It actually stops playing, but we need this. So what I did was I resampled it. I turned it off. And this is what these are, this trombone. And then we use complex and the pitching to actually pitch down and do the same notes that this is doing. But we're just making sure that We can hear these notes. So these are working now that they're in audio. I used an imager and I saw that this was wide, no mono signal. So I duplicated it and I made sure I made a mono signal. On this one, you can see we lowered the width, negative 89. It's nice in the middle. And this is a really big layer, both of these trombones together. This sound will be resampled for the drop later on. And all four of these, the tuba, French horn, and both trombones, will be resampled to make these brass shots right here. So if you listen to the C sharp note, you can simply make a new audio track, go resampling, hit record. While all these are soloed, you can record a shot. So it'll record the whole thing, but you can cut it and fade it to make your brass shot, which is essentially what I did for the next upcoming section, because I wanted it to be doing little brass shots on C sharp, which is the root note, like these. Then I added a camel crusher to make it loud, British clean, added a little bit of highs with this EQ, just for nice brass shots while it's building up. You see here, there's more resamples. So what I did was I got the trombone and I made the trombone do the same thing that this is doing. So keep in mind, these are going from the home and walking down from home. But these over here are kind of doing something different. We're starting up in the scale at B and walking down to the home. Home is right here, C sharp. We're walking from B. And then what we did was we got the trombone at C sharp, put it right here to make some fast ones. We made that do the same thing. So see, I pitched this up plus 10 to B, Pitch this one plus eight, plus seven. 
I pitch them all accordingly so that they can match this. So now we need to make the layer for the fast layer, right? Sounds like this. That's tuba, French horn, both trombones, plain, scale down. So I resampled those four into this, made this audio, but then in this audio, we pitched everything down an octave. So it's already playing the correct notes, so all I have to do is just pitch each of them down an octave, and it just is a lower octave version of the cool scale down brass. Now that's an important one. Sounds really nice and dark. And we combine it with the originals, which creates really nice loud sound. Yeah, and then this sound, if we image, image it, you'll see there's no mono. So I thought, okay, so in the drop, we can add that mono layer to make it even thicker in the drop. And that's what we did. We, by the way, both of them have a loud rack. The easy clean rack is just OTT and a camel crusher. British clean, making it loud and clean. But now this one will have the imager making it more mono. So this is the dark, low mono brass. And then we have um, the regular one, which looks like this. And both together sound like this. That's full in the stereo spectrum. And then we combine it with our trombones our French horn. But keep in mind, this is the drop section where we're playing the scale down. The other scale down was during the buildup, so we didn't need as much layers. But now during the drop, we need more layers. So we have all those that I just showed you. Regular trombones, the resampled brass, that's an octave down, the French horn, the tuba, and then we add another one layer three brass so this is a dark french horn and we're adding that for even more volume during the drop while it's going scale down we want to make this section sound different than the drop and louder and thicker so that's why we added an extra layer this is the french horn ensemble and then if you look at the notes we have b1 on this one, the above French horn is B2. So this is an octave lower on this French horn. Let's just make it a lower and darker. Lots of layers here. If you're still following though, you understand now when we get to the drop, we have to make it darker. We also have to turn on this reverb at 1.2 seconds of decay, 52% dry wet, just to add that space. Gonna be layered with a sub. And then the trombone, we're gonna take it down an octave. So it used to sound you know, like this. And now keep in mind this was going down, so this is C sharp that's playing, which is the root note. So we walked down the scale and then we end up at C sharp, but an octave lower for both trombones. Both brasses are here, resampled. Then we have new resamples. What are these? This is new. This hasn't played yet in the song. What this is, is the tuba and the French horn. These are low octave instruments, low octave brasses. And remember, we played them at B, A, G, F, E, D. And then we end at C-sharp, which is the home note. Perfect resolution. But this time, we're going to resample these C-sharp notes on the tuba and on that French horn low octave. That's what it sounds like. So then we resample it to this. And we use the fades. 
Let's fade it up and make it sharp. That's our final layer with our trombones. And turn these off. Pause for resampling only. Keep in mind these. This has an imager on it, just to see how wide it is. It's pretty mono. And then the second one, we made it super wide. So utility 400, reverb 100%. We're making this a wide layer, for the tuba and the French horn, and then a mono. You see each layer has mono and wide, and then we combine all the layers together to make a super loud, reverbed, Dark space horn. Check it out. How we do it. With the sub, you have the full frequencies as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this. A lot of layering going on, lots of post processing going on. If you have any questions, put them in the comments so I can help you guys out. In the Patreon, we have lots of free goodies, so check those out. I'm still doing private lessons all the time, so book yours today. Otherwise, have a great day. Stay fresh. Keep it real. Later.